What is going on guys? So welcome to another AYDMS video and if you have no clue what that is, that is answering your DMs. Alright, so I made this series a really long time ago because answering all the DMs just, you know, by myself and stuff was just, it was a lot, right? It was a lot. I used to spend hours and hours every single day replying to people on Instagram and Snapchat and just talking back to everybody, but those days are long gone. And now, to be frankly honest, if you send me a message on Instagram or Snapchat now, the likelihood of me answering is a whole lot less because of Kelly. And now that I have a fiance, whenever I have free time, I no longer look at my phone and spend two, three, four hours a day answering DMs. Now I spend that time with Kelly. So I hope you guys kind of understand that, but that is definitely a change. So if you've been wondering like, why hasn't he replied to my DMs? Pretty much if I'm on social media, I am just doing a post or something like that. Whenever I'm not on it, I'm spending that quality time with Kelly. So I'm gonna go through Instagram right now. So I should have plenty, 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 hundreds and hundreds of DMs to go through, right? So we should have a pretty good video here for you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the first question. So the first question is a pretty simple one and I'm gonna change a little bit, but they said, did you get BAH while you were in basic training? I personally didn't have BAH because at the time that I left for basic training, I just moved all my stuff back at home so I didn't have an apartment or anything. So no, I didn't specifically, but yes, you will. So if you leave for basic training, no matter what branch you're doing, if you have rent or a mortgage, or I mean, if you're married, you can, that will all be figured out and you will get a housing allowance if you are married. If you do have, like I said, rent or a mortgage or whatever. Also, BAH for the military is based off of your zip code. So if you wanna know how much you're actually going to get, then you can just look up army or military BAH cost or whatever, just Google your zip code and then that will pop up there. All right, so this next one is probably one that I haven't gotten that much and that is you know, also a topic that I haven't covered in a video. So this person is asking, if you are in Korea for like four months, for example, do you get leave? So I'm gonna take that question bundle it up a little bit differently and then answer it a little bit differently. So you get, if you didn't know, 2.5 days of leave every single month that you are in the military. So you're gone for basic training, let's just say 12 weeks, which is about three months or so, you're gonna get seven and a half days of leave. And you can use that leave any time that you want to so long as your command approves it, right? Now, if you are stationed overseas, Korea isn't like a deployment, it's just you're getting stationed over there. Um, you're, we're not in war with North Korea right now. So you go over to Korea, you're not gonna see any combat or anything like that. So you get stationed over there, you're gonna accumulate those leave days. Now, typically, if you take leave over there, then you're just gonna stay in Korea. Technically, if you have enough saved up, you can home, go home. But when you go on leave in the military, you're just taking time off. If you are somewhere away from home and you wanna come back to the United States or if you wanna come back, uh, or if you're in the United States, you wanna go wherever your hometown is, you're gonna to have to pay for that expense. So technically, if you wanted to take a week of leave while in Korea, you would have to pay for your flight to come home and then go back, right? So that would be really, really expensive. And in most cases, it's not really worth it. Just take some leave, have some fun there, or save up your leave for whenever you actually get home. So that kind of answers that question. So he says four months in Korea, you would get 10 days of leave. You could go on leave in Korea, you could go home with it, but you're gonna be spending a lot of money on that flight. So here's one I've never heard before, and this is actually a really good question, which is on family day, but really in particular, this could apply on any day, but this person is asking on family day, can Ubers take you on post or do you have to have your own car or whatever? So it's actually a really good question. So if you go to AIT or something like that, or if you want to visit somebody on post, Uber drivers, Lyft, all that stuff, unless the driver themselves, they have a CAC, they have a military ID, they're not gonna be able to get on post. So that's actually kind of important for some people that may be watching this. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to get an Uber or something, you're not gonna get on a base with an Uber or a Lyft, but 
you can get a taxi, right? So some taxi drivers are gonna be qualified to be able to get on post because that's how you're gonna get around on post if you're like in AIT or something is they have taxis all over the bases. And so you can take taxis on and off post, but that's only for specific tax specific taxi services. So you would have to figure out which taxi service is going to um, allow you to actually get on post. So that's something that you gotta think about. But yeah, congratulations. Sammy for actually asking me a question that I've never gotten before and that is can uber drivers take you on or off a military post the answer is No, so get a taxi But make sure that the taxi asks them whenever they call or whenever you call if they can get you on the base So one of the negatives of living in an apartment is whenever they mow the grass It freaking sucks and they're doing it like crazy today and the last question that I'm going to answer for this quick little AYDMS video is, is if you go to basic training at a higher rank, so you go to basic training, you're either E1 to E4, E1, E2, E3, E4, right? So if you're an E2, E3, E4, do you get treated any differently than the lowest level private of an E1? And the answer is, with the exception of some specialists, no, you don't get treated any different. If you're a PFC, a private, or a private with no rank, then you are just treated as a private. Some specialists, because they have four-year degrees, some of the drill sergeants may put them in leadership positions, especially early on, just because they don't know anybody, so they're probably gonna give the person with the college degree the leadership position initially. So that is really the only difference. As far as do the drill sergeants treat you like differently on a personal level? No, they're not gonna treat anybody differently. So they're just gonna view you all. And some drill sergeants just view everybody as privates. They call everybody privates or, or is it soldiers? I don't know. I think drill sergeants have to call, you know, basic trainees like warriors or some, some weird thing. They call them trainees. It's weird. So they call basically everybody the same thing and they treat, they try to treat everybody the exact same. So if you come in as an E4, you're not really gonna get any special privileges or anything like that. And I actually have heard of some people like, if you you know, were in like the Navy or something for a really long time and you joined the Army and you come in as like an E5 and you have to go to base training, I've seen that and I've had some people kind of let me know their experience and you do get treated really a lot more, a lot more better. Sometimes they have separate barracks for those people if you come in as an NCO because you are an NCO. So that's a little, that's completely different. But if you join as an E3 or an E4, which is very common, you're not getting treated different. So that's gonna be it for this video. I did get a reply back on that guy who asked about going on leave in Korea after four months. I mean, if you're in Korea for four months, I'm not really sure about the circumstances about that, but he replied back asking like how often they can go on leave. Well, because of the 2.5 days of leave you get every month, Honestly, like if you're in Korea for less than a year, you know, or less than six months for some reason, if you're there for less than six months, but if you're there for less than six months, I just say, stick it out. Don't go on leave. Just save up your leave when you get home. There's no sense in my opinion on spending all the money to come, to come home, especially in this person's scenario of four months when you're just gonna be home like super soon. So after two months, if you go on leave for five days, you're just gonna be back home in two months. So anyways, that's just my recommendation. So whenever you guys join into the military, if you are somewhere for an extended period of time, then yeah, you can go and leave. If not, trying to tough it out. And you know, if you're going, if you're on opposite ends of the United States, which happens a lot, try to tough it out and save up that leave for whenever you're actually closer to home. So that is gonna be it for this AYDMS video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That'd be awesome. If you're gonna check out some more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That will be even better. If you haven't picked up any of the merch in the merch store, I got some hats and stuff, new hats and things like that. I got a bunch of new little things coming out in the works. Um, technically, Black Friday is coming up soon, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat if you haven't already. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day, and I will see y'all later. Drop.